down on the river, companies with backup barges are losing five to ten thousand dollars a day. Down on the farm, chickens are suffocating and dairy cows are being sold to slaughter. Is there any reason to look up? Any farmer or rancher in these drought areas looks out, sees crops, uh, wheat, uh, soybeans, whatever it might be, just dead in the ground. There's nothing that tells them hope. The weather projections don't tell them hope. The projection for the week ahead calls for more of the same. The uh, current prediction uh, is valid from the middle of June through the middle of July. Abnormally warm conditions basically across the middle of the country from roughly the Rocky Mountains uh, eastward across the plains, including the northern plains, through the uh, lower Midwest and into New England. In looking back at uh, previous occurrences of events like this, there have been situations that did turn around during the summer. This turnaround is moving slower than the paddle wheels along the thirsty Mississippi. Barges stranded near Memphis are moving with the help of tugboats, but the Coast Guard is allowing the passage of only five boats at a time. Some shippers are switching to the relatively new Tennessee Tom Bigby waterway that runs from Alabama to the Tennessee River, connecting to the Ohio River. Barge traffic along the waterway has increased by 50% in recent days. There also have been some showers to speak of, but a Saturday night storm in Atlanta did more harm than good. Six people were struck by lightning. One man was killed as he ran for cover near a rural creek. As the crisis grows worse, the nation is turning to Washington for help. The Agriculture Department is focusing on feed. Some animals that have no feed or no water, and we have to get in there and do something about that. But the help will come too late for Indiana dairy farmer Ernest Hardso. The cows he hoped to retire on are headed for auction. Luann Sanders. CNN reporting. Other service for help, they've resorted to prayer. But as CNN's Jeff Offgang reports, the dry conditions have still taken their toll. In the farm country of northeastern Georgia, the fields are baked brown by the unrelenting sun. The corn crop is lost. There's only hay left to feed the cattle. The soybeans have hardly grown. Here in this shed, these two-week-old chicks are suffering in 90-degree heat. If the weather doesn't let up soon, these chicks could die. On the Sabbath in Georgia, prayers took on a special urgency. At a small Baptist church in Walton County, the minister preaches that the drought, like the rain, is part of God's plan. You see, God has a natural law that governs this world. It's that same God that causes the rain on the just as well as the unjust. Pastor Hornsby called on his flock to pray for rain. Lord, as we stop to pray for ourselves and for the physical condition of our land and the need for the replenishing of natural resources within our area, we also pray, our Father, for a spiritual replenishing of our own lives, that you give yourself the water of life to fill our thirsty souls. Nathan Malcolm was among those who knelt at the altar. Back in his soybean field, he recounts his plight. Strife is hurting everything that I'm doing. I got a poultry operation and it's hurting it. And the beef cattle, it's all the food supply and the water supplies are drying up. And then your row cropping is partially gone and not being able to be put in ground at all. Lunch in the family kitchen. A fan turning overhead does little to relieve the stifling heat. Nathan's wife, Dot, tries to put their hardship into words. Just live the life of a farmer one day, I guess. Knowing that that's where our uh, living comes from. It's the water that comes to the ground that makes our our food, our, that makes our living. On this day, the only consolation comes from faith and a hope of easier times to come. Jeff Offgang, CNN reporting. Well, surprisingly enough, there are some places that are having too much rain.